From the True Silver Championship, I'm your host Nimsh and I'm here with Raven and Lothar. We've seen some amazing things so far. We've seen Explorers through League, we've seen Druid being dominating, and we've seen players being happy and sad at the same time. Uh, unfortunately, our, both RDU and Thais are 0-2 at the moment. But uh, before we talk about the players specifically, let's talk about the group stages, because some matches we haven't seen, and some, some matches are being played off stage. So let's talk about Group A to start with. We have AK Wonder, RDU, Super JJ, Boar Control, and we've seen AK Wonder win versus RDU here on stage. And Ty, they will be playing in other matches to, de uh, to decide who hey, will be going through. So for RDU, next Pretty example, good yourself. in this situation, there's a chance yeah. that everyone Are you coming else to watching the match? will go for a 1-2. And uh, I mean, two other people will go for the 1-2. Oh, really? Uh, then the, there will be still some Oh, I didn't know. So you're like match. in the late part of, of the day? Because some players people will start try to win later. as much as possible. So Have it will be a diff today, difficult or? task. Okay, so yeah, you're starting later right. than everyone. And we also have Super yeah. JJ uh, winning versus RDU. So as you mentioned, like RDU is in a, in a really tough situation. There's maybe like 10% chance that he will actually advance, right? I don't know the exact chance, but I would say it's more than 25. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, but it's uh, possible. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's unlikely that it will happen. And the same situation, there will be second player from G2 and the next group. And uh, but yeah, but the, this the. This group will not see any more matches until, I think, 9 p.m. Oh, okay. so they have to wait for a so long time. We'll have to wait and see how it goes, uh, because the next match that we have it will be between Six or Trump, which is from Group C, if I, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's that's right. But before we go to Group C, let's jump into Group B and what is happening there. So we've mentioned Tice, and uh, yeah, Tice is losing badly. Two losses. Uh, he lost versus Kranich that we've seen, and Kranich lost himself to Legendaren. And then Vizhu was the one who actually won versus Thais as well. Yeah, well, it doesn't look good for my players, but I <laughs> still have some some hopes for them. Uh, so maybe there will be a, a, a this, the, the, maybe this situation will occur, as uh, we just discussed, that a three-player tie and they will just play a rematch uh, of some sort to just decide who will be advancing. But for now, we don't have a clear a uh, clear leader of any group. Lothar, let's focus on the winners, not losers. Yeah, but <laughs> Bijou, he won the UK qualifier and he won versus European champion. Yeah, not doing too bad at all. Absolutely, Not right? too bad at all. Got to be happy with the performance so far. And again, we saw in the uh, the video where he was like, I didn't really expect to get this far and then to win in the uh, the final of the qualifier, then to get into top 16. And already now he's 1-0 up. I mean, he's uh, got to be feeling on top of the world at the moment. Just got to gotta, just gotta keep going, really, and keep his focus. Absolutely. But I, I agree with Lothar. There are no clear winners overall yet because we've only uh, seen a couple of matches. Let's jump to Group C then. Uh, Trump versus Sixo is the next match we're going to see right now on stream. And they are from that group specifically. Trump already won versus uh, Ness, I believe, because Ness won versus Freaky. That's his win. Freaky's loss, and then Ness's loss is, up, is to Trump yeah. specifically. So Trump might be the first person to actually have two wins in this tournament if he if he manages to win against Sixo. And to be honest, Trump is on a roll lately. He advanced to to the second stage of Salado to the finals, right? Yeah. He he had a crushing um, crushing results in the first group stage of, uh, of Sarada with 3-1, if I recall correctly, in a really stacked group with a round-robin format too. So he's doing really well lately, and I wouldn't be surprised if he will stomp Sixo here. Yeah, absolutely. I think Trump is on a roll like for the full year. Like He almost qualified for the NA Championships. He won versus Firebat. He actually qualified for the NA Championships. He, almost, he got knocked out at some point versus Jab. But uh, he was really close to qualifying for BlizzCon himself. So yeah. Trump is an amazing player. And is he not top 10 at the Ghost of Games ranking right now in the world? Yeah, probably, it's probably close, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Trump is one of the most um, terrifying players here. But uh, let's talk about Group D as well. So Group D, we have uh, the last four players from our top 16. But not least, we have Life Coach, Colento, Slyfa, and Riri. We've seen Slyfa win versus Riri. Yeah, and, and the, the next match after we'll have Six and Trump will be between Life Coach and Colento. So something we didn't see for a long time, uh, the, the matchups of the Giants, we might say. Like, uh, Colento wasn't really competing that much lately, and all the, his results were impressive, but he's still a force to be reckoned with. And Life Coach, well, he had uh, amazing results this year. 
So we'll see how it goes um, between those two really great players after the, ma the match that we'll have right now. Yeah, and uh, Colento already won one game because he won versus Slytha. So uh, interesting, interesting times. We've seen a lot of great games, but we have tons, tons of Hearthstone for you guys uh, in the near future. So today we'll have, I believe, six more matches? Or something close to that? I think so. It'll be around that amount. It's ten matches in general, and right now it's the fourth match, right? Fifth. Fifth. Think fifth. This yeah, is then we'll have six more matches. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. And uh, tomorrow we'll have to wait. So today, uh, round robin group stages, four group stages, as you've seen, <laughs> everybody playing versus everybody. Oh my god, Trump and Six are look very different. Look well, at that. There we Trump go. and Six are look like two Polish guys. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? All right, guys, Trump versus Six, though. This is a really good match as well. So Trump playing mostly in tournaments. He's not that known as the ladder performer. Like, he had his moments with Hunter before, but he's not the best ladder player. Where Six, though, is the ladder god. He yeah. always gets the first spot. Uh, in tournaments, he sometimes he gets really far, but then he, he didn't have that many wins. Yeah, it feels a little bit um, a bit inconsistent. He, he either performs extremely well, or then surprisingly, he can just be like knocked out pretty quickly. He's so he's very definitely prone to emotions. Right? Yeah, that, that's his problem. He's yeah. he'll hit, especially if his opponent try to nail that weakness <laughs> yeah. and try to make him uh, like not feel well with And it's the something game, people right? should do. Like, yeah. if someone's yeah, going to get course. thrown off by something, you do it. If someone prefers playing more quickly, then you should just take your whole turn time every single turn. Yeah, just slam part of the game. The psychology is actually part of the game. Slam them. Just say, happy Feast of Wintervale <laughs> at the very beginning of the game. Uh, I wonder if Blizzard realized how sort of BM that emo actually sounds. I mean, they, they had to make the instructions to make uh, the sound voices, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just say it just like say you're really like, not genuine about it. Yeah, just say it like you mean it, but mean like you're rude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it looks With like a mean voice. It looks like it's going to be Aggro Shaman that we've seen very recently all pop up quite a lot, mainly due to those trogs having quite a big impact to making Ancestral Knowledge playable. Uh, and it's not a surprise that, uh, that Sixo likes this deck. So uh, as he is known, he can play other things, of course, but he is known more for the, uh, an aggressive player overall. Yeah. And oh, wow, from that opening another in! Another Curator, wow. He just needs a dragon. Is there a dragon with Death Rattle? Yes, there is. There is. There's the uh, Chilmo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. imagine. imagine. <laughs> Straight into Chilmo. Chilmo can actually happen. But yeah, I'm super happy to see Shaman from both players, actually. Um, they, they have Shaman in their lineups. And Six is playing the Elemental Destruction one, so this is not the Super Face. It's a, it is an aggressive one, obviously, with Leper Gnomes. Interesting. So he plays the Elemental Destruction to just take oh. advantage out of minions with Divine Shield? That would be my guess. Well, Elemental Destruction works also if you just um, don't have a great opening. You can reset the board, and then with Lava Shock, you can actually get the, the Mana Crystals back. So I've seen Colento playing this this version at, at Star Ladder, uh -huh. and he performed really well. So either you have a super bursty opening and just, you just win on turn 5-6, but if you struggle with the with the cards, if you have a lot of burst cards, you can actually keep them in hand, clear the board with Elemental Destruction or two, and then you still have like a lot of cards to follow up. Yeah, it's, okay. some, it's something that the uh, so the other lists of Aggro Shaman really struggle with. It's like once you lose board, there is zero way to, yeah. to get that back at all. Well, you have Ancestral Knowledge, but uh, it's definitely difficult to come back. Spell Power Totem, which will be not that useful right now, but uh, make, make a difference in the future if Trump is not able to clear it. So. The, Six is thinking about going face here instead of killing the zombie chow. Very interesting decision. Just to be super aggressive instead. This might be indicating that he wants to use the elemental destruction after this turn. Because Trump will try to maintain board control. So he'll play minions just to take advantage of it, right? Well actually those minions the, both minions contest uh, the the and golem. So it's not it's not like you really have to kill the zombie chow. Because if you want to kill the Totem Golem with those minions, you still have to attack with both of them into Totem Golem. So the effect is more, more or less the same, but you dealt free damage. So it's something. Elemental Destruction is an option. Oh. Death Ooh. Lord, Starlag, and Hunter Creeper. Death Lord might be one of the biggest upsets in this matchup. Yeah. It is a great card versus this deck specifically because you're not running any big minions. Yeah, and the Shaman um, also only normally runs one Earthshock. 
Uh, it's not too common to see two, and it might actually run none. So uh, even just being able to earth shot the Death Lord and just carry on through that uh, is, is going to be rough, as the likelihood to draw into it this early isn't isn't too high. It does have a lot of options though, six oh now. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a weird board, but you probably what you probably want to do is play Doomhammer on turn five to start dealing even more damage and be able to contain this board. But then what do you really do if you don't want to overload? Elemental Destruction is an option, but it doesn't feel good this turn. It feels too early. Yeah. I don't mind this. Get, get some minions on the board, and maybe the Priest trades into them and, you know, like... Like, just prolongs the game a little bit, but ah, this Death Lord is going to cause some major issues. Yep. Already we've seen Curator in the, you know, the past couple of games we've seen it being played have a pretty big impact. And it looks like um, what will Trump will try to achieve here is to get as much value from the Death Lord as possible, so I wouldn't be surprised if he just slams it on the board, kills the Curator on the um, Leper Gnome or just the Divine Shield, and then trade with the Dark Cultist to maybe nail uh, his death lord effect on the on the death lord, right? So it will yeah. be a two eleven minion. And do you really want to do that though? Because there's only one elf shock, right? Yeah, there is. But death lord is a great silence target anyway. So maybe you want to bump the toughness of the Northshire cleric instead. It's a tough one. I think if you buff it, buff the taunt up though, he either has to just like plow through it. He has to draw earth shock. If he earth shocks it, well, you have a big minion that's still going to con uh, consistently trade every single turn. Because he's not going to kill it if he doesn't have to, right? This matchup is really tricky for Shaman overall. Because you, at the very beginning of the game, you feel like you want to concede. Because you're playing versus Priest. There are taunts, heals. But Shaman can gather so much damage with Doom Hammers, Rogue Biters. And you can draw cards. There is ancestral knowledge for, for six, so, so he will be able to draw something. And actually oh. accumulate a big hand. Oh, well, that's a big draw. Yeah. That's just going to negate with heal. It's just going to negate the, two, the four damage he did with Doom Hammer this turn. Yeah. And something to bear in mind as well, although the priest... Oh, wow. <laughs> Do you go Veilus? <laughs> well, you know there was no Earth Shock, right, in the opponent hand? Yeah, he, he just would have Earth Shot. Why would he tank four damage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But something to note as well, although the priest isn't exactly going to try and rush the Shaman down, every time he attacks into this minion, it's four damage a turn onto the Shaman, and the Shaman runs no healing, so, you know, he's pushing you further into the, the winning position as well. It's, it's kind of crazy. So Sixo needs Earth Shock or Rogue Fighter? Elemental Destruction. Wow. Well, you might actually go for it, but then you will be locked. Could I think you might have to. I didn't see that coming, like, second elemental destruction. The Colento was playing two of them, yeah. So this okay. might be Colento's list. I really like super similar. Luffy's list was more aggressive. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that the worst card in the deck? You to do. Pull out the worst minion? Possibly, because you, you, do, you really want to play I think it. it is. Yeah, because you, you need the, it's a 1-3, and that's it. You, you basically need to play it. Like, you really yeah. want to have the shapeshift to go with the Doomhammer, or just the Steady Shot. Yeah, all yeah. the Hunter hero power, yeah. Ooh. Okay. I really like the decision to steal the Lepernon here, because just the fact that it negates two, uh, two damage, even though if it might die uh, to the attack from the, uh, from the Synth Finlay, doesn't really matter. So yeah. it's just like additional heal. Yeah. Finley doesn't do anything. So how much does Trump want a dragon right about now with two Wimra stages? I mean, really that, could, that could just... Well, from Trump's point of view, with one uh, elemental destruction gone, he might not know that there's a second one. Yeah. So that could just lock out the game from his side. If only Valen's Chosen would have added taunt to the minion. <laughs> You like, just want overpowered cards, Lothar. <laughs> you know, guys, that's, that's all you want to say. You know what's incredible? This game is far from over. Like, Sixo still has a chance to win this. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, the amount of damage you can burst into is insane. I think it's the burst you stack in the game at the moment, right? With, like, because all the burn spells are so cheap. Uh, double crackle, that's only four mana. Lava burst, even lava shock to unlock the air, uh, unlock any extra crystals. Yeah. It'd be crazy. Second Doom Hammer with Rogue Biters. Like, yeah. If Sixo has time to get those cards, He'll be in an amazing position. And that's what the elemental destruction affords him as well. Yeah, and he's Just going for it. Replay the board, yeah. Oh, double lows on the elemental oh, destruction. Wow. Make it very awkward for Oxyx, so. Oh, he, man. He can clear the board. Well, he, <laughs> he can clear, I but think you should, he should go for the Earth Shock here, probably. Oh, Earth Shock's pretty good. Unless nice. he will draw a second Doom Hammer. Well, he can take that. Yes, damage. that was the second Doomhammer. Yeah. So very good decision to. Oh wow! Look at the amount of mana crystals that are going to be locked. 
and he doesn't have Lava Shock. He's taking tons of damage, but to be fair, he is facing a Priest. And this Cabal cannot steal the Trog. Is this actually Light Bomb Hero Power? This Trog is going to deal so much damage if there is no Light Bomb. I, I think you have to Light Bomb, because well, he can't taunt, and the problem is the Shaman's got a full hand. If he's holding Lava Shock, then he can Lava Shock and then open up with the rest of the damage, which will buff the Trog. This is the right Love play. It. Light Bomb into Trog, it was just a free free. Yeah, the correct decision, I, I agree with uh, with his line of thinking, because I think, uh, as you said, the Lava Shock would allow Xixo to overload so heavily next yeah. turn that the truck would be a force record to be reckoned with. And he still didn't draw the dragon. I was just going to say, is, has he like half and half this list for Control Priest and Dragon Priest, but forgot the dragons? No idea. That was Lava Shock, and I turned oh. to late. Oh man, that would be so huge last turn, but still. This is still good because he can um, Doomhammer, Feral Spirit. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, overload, and then next turn I'm he can Lava Shock uh, and then play uh, Lightning, uh, not Lightning, Lava Burst and, uh, and Crackle as well. If he gets something like, well, there is the Holy Nova, but if he picks up that Rock Biter, that was a really good decision. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there, there we, we go. go. Oh, and he's out what? of Elemental Destruction. A dragon? There are dragons in this deck? I guess you might want to keep it still in, in your hand, right? The yeah, line. yeah, I think you have I'm to. I'm not sure what he plays in the deck, but uh, if he plays a Chilmo, and I would guess he is playing a Chilmo, he would like to have that uh, Death Rattle effect on board, right? Yeah. And what's a 2-1 actually going to do on, on this board state? It's not going to really make an impact into yeah, the game anyway, so it's worth much more keeping it as a Dragon Battery. Second Lava Burst, that's a lot of damage. He's just missing the Rock Biter weapon somewhere in the deck. And it's very... Uh, interesting that he already drew two Ancestor Knowledge, so he'll be top decking a single card every single turn. So he knows uh, what kind of burst he can do. Yeah. If if he can count that, let's say next turn will be Rock Biter, right? So then he knows that he will deal, dish out ten damage next turn. So what he wants to do is go through the taunts this turn yeah. to just ensure that the Rock Biter can deal phase damage. Next you might actually, That's the way to win well, the game. He, he, yeah. can earth shot, he can earth shot one, abusive sergeant the 2-3 two, to kill the two other 2-4 two, that's taunting. I don't think you need to use earth shock. You can probably just use abusive kill one and kill the second with the weapon strikes and then go out one to face. I'm just wondering, you're going to take four if you use the weapon. Yeah, and the problem is he's health. pretty low, yeah. Yeah, if he was higher then of course. He's a priest. You'd... What can priest even do to you? Like you've seen that it's chosen. Holy fire, man. <laughs> yeah, holy, holy fire. fire. I, j I just wonder if you lava burst face or do you lava burst the 4-5? Oh, he's using the Crackle instead. And then... Oh, oh my god, six damage from the Crackle. That's Let's truck onto the Taunt, extra four damage, this is nice. So he has... How much damage? It's four plus... Uh, that's 12 six. damage and extend 50... That's 16 damage. 16 damage. damage. 16 damage. <laughs> he's dead. Yeah, he's just dead. Sometimes Shaman kills him. This deck is so insane, and double elemental dis destruction helped Sixo to reach this point. It gave him time. So he has one overkill. This is just crazy. Overload doesn't matter. Roll the totem. Lava shock, Going lava bomb. burst, lava burst, and Trump is concerned. That's so much damage coming into his way. That's shaman, wow. guys. That's shaman. Well, the amount of damage was just too damn high for Trump. And uh, I mean, <laughs> double we? Doomhammer. When you think about it, this priest got hit. How much times? 14 times from a weapon. <laughs> Just crazy. Can we honestly sh say that Shaman is back? And I, I jokingly said that with Sir Finley Burgleton, Shaman will be playable because we can use a different hero power finally. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, that was like a common thing when we saw the, the one mana legendary. There's only one class that benefits the most from it, mm. and it's Shaman. I think the second class is actually Druid. Yeah, because Druid's very like middle ground hero power, right? Yeah. It doesn't really do too much either way. It's sort yeah. of half defense, half offense. It's nice, but when you look at the other hero powers, because whenever you play a game like this, you want to go all one way or all the other. You know, you don't want to sort of half commit to anything. It works the same with the hero powers as well. All right, so Trump is actually queuing Reno Lock this nice. time. So instead of going for a mirror match, which I suppose he is playing something like an aggro shaman as well. We don't know which shaman is he playing exactly, but it's, it's always better to go into anti-aggro deck than just a coin flip yep. mirror match. And the idea is if he draws Reno, he should win. Like, you say that, but... Well, we un un unless you get like YOLO burst down by turn six, then like if you have Reno in time to like drop it on that turn, yeah. you should be in such a strong position because it's not like, uh, I mean, 
slightly different than that last game, but the way the Shaman would want to be played is just hyper aggro, go, go, go. There is so if it doesn't like if he doesn't quite kill him by turn six, he drops Reno down, it's gonna be really difficult to There come is back. a really good comeback for Reno. It's called Doomhammer with double rock biter. Yeah, true, true. Demon Wrath is actually gonna be a really nice pickup uh, that he's got in his opening hand there. Just to be able to get a lot of the even totems. It, it just wipes any totems that are on the board and they're so some of the lower health minions. Uh, so would you, you take the Dragon Egg because you have Demon Wrath or just go for the PO? But the fact that the Totem Golem is the it's, biggest minion well, in the opponent's deck? Mm, yeah, I'm surprised uh, the Jouster could have been okay. What high, high uh, cost minions are there in Shaman? Well, the problem is you want to kill that da that, that uh, minion that SAP, right? That's Otherwise it just deals damage to you and you don't want that. You really don't Fine, want that. Fine, just draw Reno, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, and he has a curve as well. Like, if there's any other minion being played, he can Demon Wrath if he wants to, but he can tap, so... Yeah, I, li I like yeah. my control tech as well. Like, normally this Shaman doesn't have that many minions on board. A after Throw of Spirit, it's possible, but most of the minions are high threats. Oh, there's Sir Finny Mergleton! Hmm. Well, it's an awkward turn. Because even if you use Lava Shock, you still have two mana. So I guess Sir Finn is just the best option here. Now let's look if there will be Life Tap or here. Oh, there's both. Life Tap and Steady Shot. Yep. I you guys on the stream, there's also a rogue hero power that you, I don't think you can see. I yes. can see it. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you can't see that, but uh, yeah. I think you always take... We'll just you want the, the biggest damage cards, so... I mean, um, this version of, of um, Shaman relies less on card draw, yeah. just because you have those elemental destructions. Yeah, ancestral knowledge as well, so you can always draw some cards from that. But yeah, like, I, th I think the best one is either Steady Shot or Shapeshift. I really like Shapeshift with the hammer. So we're gonna see the trade Trump had now. the option to go for the Defender of Argus to clear the board anyway, but he knows that then he's not playing around uh, elemental destruction. I yeah. really like that. And this is the, the sort of the difference between last year's standing conquest. The knowledge of the deck actually counts if you lose. Yep. Um, and knowing that those cards are there, like in conquest, well, it just wouldn't matter to him because it, well, he's won. He doesn't have to play that deck again. But this is huge, and he, it's going to be really, really helpful to play around like swingy cards like elemental destruction. Elemental destruction is so cool. Like when when Blizzard released the card, everybody was like, "We don't need this. We had lightning storm. We're fine." No, no, no. <laughs> I, I feel like people will actually using it. Uh, as a really good uh, good card for Malagos decks, yeah. and I think that was the, the 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 benchmark of how good the card is. And it actually showed it's a really good card, but it needs a certain deck type. Yeah. And I wasn't aware of the Colento version. I just I don't know. I did, I usually don't watch Colento, so I'm really surprised that it made it to the list. But it looks brilliant. It really looks brilliant in this deck. Uh, I have to get it. Uh, I have to say that it makes so much sense when you think about it. Yeah. And it's kind of funny as well, because the flip side is Lava Shock um, negates the negative impact of the Elemental Destruction. Yeah. But I think Shaman as a whole needed something to actually make Overload good as well. Yeah. So then, like, when both sides of it have happened, you know, you come up with a deck like this, and it, as we can see, some of the best players in the world are taking this deck to a tournament. So bet Truck can survive the Elemental Destruction, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be plus five by <laughs> oh, time. Oh, oh, man. Imagine? Oh, man. That would be so OP. The truck is good on itself, anyway. The yeah. truck Let's not make the truck better. Again, Lothar after these overpowered cards. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you're not in the balance team for uh, for Hearthstone. It'd be like, yeah, just, should we get no. balance chosen, Torn? And, uh... You know what would be the first thing I would change? Innervate. <laughs> really? Yeah. You would uh, change it to give free mana instead of two. Yeah, of course. That, that, that would be <laughs> my plan, to make it a Black Lotus. <laughs> Nice. I'll just go full hog and just make it do Ancestral Communion. And innovate <laughs> to 10 mana, go. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, Trump is doing pretty good, but then 6 so, <laughs> so I mean, much damage there. This is what's scary about this Shaman deck. I mean, it might not be enough. I've not done the maths yet. But the fact that they don't need minions on board to actually finish the game out, the way it wants to go is the uh, aggressive minions early game and then just burst them from hand late game. Well, it's I think it's the first legit version of a burn deck, right? Yeah because it relies so much on spells instead of minions. Uh, yep. By the way, I think Trump has lethal if Sixo disregards the damage on board. Because if Sixo just goes Feral Spirit, then Trump uses Hellfire and wins. Yep. And if he starts killing minions, how do you kill those minions? Like, it's awkward. Well, he can play Feral Spirit, right? Yeah, but then he just loses. Oh, Hellfire will clear anyway, right, of course. So do you try maybe using Crackle on one of those minions? 
If he uses that, that would be a pretty good call. But then risking that there is no Hellfire is also all right. So yeah, it seems that that's it. Just Hellfire, kill the minions, and then there is nine more. So perfect kill for Trump. Unless there is spell damage, I haven't noticed, but there shouldn't be. Easy clear. And success is like, ah, oh, he had it. Yep. Well, you know, this shaman has to lose at some point, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it was true. it was the the trog not being strong enough. That's what ruined the challenge. He didn't exactly. get the perfect openings. Like even but with the elemental destructions, the opening wasn't that great, right? Yeah, and what's kind of weird as well is like the Reno Lock didn't really do anything that Reno Lock does in that game. He just straight up just beat him with minions. There was nothing too crazy coming out there. There was no Reno, and uh, I think there was just a farce here for the heal, right? Yeah. Just putting him a bit uh, up. And Divider Varga is always good versus those aggressive decks. All right, so right now it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, Shaman is out, and Priest is out. Yeah, I'm going to see Warlock Mirror, and this is also Reno Lock. Yeah. Like, every time I see Molten Giant, I'm like, Reno Lock. Yeah, there's still a few players uh, playing, like, Demon Lock, but when you combine it, when you combine it with seeing Bran as well, like, it's almost certain. It's hard to say, though. But yeah, Bran, Bran is an interesting card in Reno Lock. Some people haven't played it, but then if you look at the list, there, there are so many battle cries as well. And it's just a good turn free card as a filler. Yeah, and also you can actually just, because this uh, the Reno Lock list by nature is so flexible in terms of it's all one of, so taking one card out and swapping it isn't really going to impact the deck too heavily. You could even, if you wanted, just tailor in a couple more battle cry cards if you're playing Bran to then just get a little bit more, uh, more impact out of that. That ooze just going to come down for turn two, put something on the board. So what's important in this matchup if you have two decks that have an extreme ability to heal? Uh, it's just not all going to be about board control. Um, maybe, you know, you can take the, uh, the version of whoever plays Reno first loses. Um, but if you can build a big board, you get to the point where Reno, although yes, it'll heal them back up, the turn after, you've like reset to like, you've gone back in time almost, burst back down the health, hopefully got rid of Reno and then can carry on as the game was going anyway. All right, so it seems that right now Trump has a pretty good situation where he will have Defender of Argus and he has some kind of a board. He can deal with the Shredder and what comes out of Shredder without losing that many minions. Or is there anything else that you can do here? I, I like Defender, I mean, just attack. The Defender attack with the Imgang boss into Shredder. Well, the Defender changes the Imgang boss into a Violet Teacher, so it's a good thing, I would say. Yeah, uh, pretty reasonable. Violet Teacher is one of the best counters to pilot Shredders, so why wouldn't you use that? And even if you hit a 2-2 or a 2-3 minion, you can sh then trade with the with the Ooze. Oh. Oh. oh, Owl, though. Owl in six. Would you use an Owl for that? Because it's so valuable against the random legendaries that you yeah. you, you players I just, with <laughs> Rena Jackson will play, right? I just think, like, Owl onto the... Um, you can get so much value on the board immediately. That's and true. you have Coil as well. He, he could just choose to taunt up if he wanted to, but just at the moment... Oh, okay, he's gone, he's gone for the Argus, that's fine. Uh, he could have used... Uh, some Fiori and Tap if you wanted to, but yeah, the Argus is okay. I just love this deck. So many random cards. <laughs> Refreshment Vendor, Stalag. It's so cool to watch. I mean, that now that all those people saying, why would you even make a card like a Refreshment Vendor? They have to shut shut up, right? <laughs> because it's... Pipe down. <laughs> yeah. Because this is why you have different cards with different type of uh, effects, even though they have the same stats because they can fit into different strategies and Reno Jackson made them all viable. Exactly, as every new set and new uh, collection of cards is released, suddenly, you know, as we can see uh, already just today, there's so many different deck types and uh, so much, so many different ways you can choose to just slot in the odd card here and there to make a dip there, to make a change to the deck. Trade, yeah, oh, he's going for Hellfire, okay. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty good Hellfire there. Good good option, I think. His Ancient Watcher is just staying there. <laughs> Dr. Boom as well for, for six. So yeah, Sylvanas into Boom never feels bad. Yeah. Tap into Refreshment Vendor, I think that's the option. Because you have an even trade with the uh, with the Ancient Watcher, which also, oh, of course feels very bad. But uh, I don't think you have an option to do anything else here. I, I agree. Star Starlag is not doing much. All right, so Refreshment Vendor. 
getting the car uh, carrots. Chicken. Was it chicken? Yeah, I think so. It is a chicken, is but the kids say it's funnel cake. I have no time for the, um, the carrots are the stable master card, I think, that throws yeah, the carrots. Yeah, the carrots for stable master. I know because I used the card a few times lately. Nice. In some ways, it's more of your crazy hunter decks. Yeah. Now the, um, the Sylvanas is pretty much an, a, a, really, a, a huge annoyance. For How good would Mortal Coil be this turn? Can you not just Stalag? I mean, like, you obviously kill the 5 3 with the 3 5, and you tap. And if you just play Stalag to contest Sylvanas. Mm, that's not bad. Now let's see what are the options. Um, I think it's the reasonable option is just to implosion the Ancient Watcher, and uh, that's it. I, I, I like the Stalag play. Because it forces the kill on the Stalag. And if. Sixo does something to sacrifice his own Sylvanas to steal the Stalag. I was like, be my guest. Yeah. I'd rather deal with Stalag than Sylvanas. But even now, like, I suppose you'd feel like the trade for the Sylvanas into the Stalag and then just drop boom like that. Stalag is so awkward. Like, you can't silence it because it doesn't matter at all. Yeah, you need to silence the second one that comes yeah, exactly, out to, uh, exactly. to be able to stop the death rattle effect oh. going off. Oh, Fuga neutral. <laughs> oh, the tap, okay. So I guess we're going to see Peddler into BGH. The options are Power Overwhelming, Blood Sail Corsair, and Voidwalker. Um, what do you like in this? The Voidwalker feels like it doesn't do much. Yo. Yeah, the POs are going to be selected there. Pretty reasonable. So oh, he is actually he stealing is it. steal with the PO. Yep. I mean, I don't blame nice. him. Yeah, hit for nine and then steal the minion. That's this is why I didn't like the Stalag play, you know? This is something that you You're hoping will it lose. goes into the Sylvanas, uh, say, the force trade. Yeah. And now... Now you he lost a lot of value. Well, Even you can Implosion and Demon Wrath. And it doesn't matter that Stalag dies, because you have Fugan. Do they proc off each other, Aww. even though they're on the other side of the board? Yeah, yeah. Does the text say, like, if yeah. one dies, If one stop? dies, yes. yeah. Yeah, Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's still good for Trump. Oh, he probably preferred to have more imps, but it's still okay. It's so funny like how this game is slowly progressing. It's, it, it seems like nobody's doing anything here. Especially with all those heals in hands as well. I'm kind of surprised Ooh. this many people have taken Reno Lock this tournament, to be honest. I know the deck's good, but there's still a lot of, you know, uh, unsureness about whether how good it actually is. Well, I'm uh, sure the guys tested it. Well, yeah. the, 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 I think the main reason why would you bring the Reno Jackson is the fact that people play aggressive decks like Shaman. Yeah, that's and true. the Reno Jackson has, a, especially a version with the refreshment vendor, has a lot of way of healing himself because there's Healbot, there's a refreshment vendor, there's Farseer, uh, there's Reno Jackson, of course. And, uh, Even Jaraxxus in some lists as well. Yeah, Jaraxxus. And um, yeah, basically, there's a lot of ways of preventing. A Zephyr Soul, yeah. Forgot about that. There's a lot of way of healing himself while still maintaining board control because you play some. Pretty damn good minions alongside. And also, right? like, triple to, to like four AoEs as well in the deck. Yeah, Demon Wrath is version. awesome. Yeah. Demon Wrath basically does the same thing as Hellfire, but doesn't damage as you. Yeah. yeah. And also, it can go toe to toe with control decks as yeah. well, so it's really flexible. It's a really solid deck, especially because of Stalag and Fugan, right? You have Thaddeus, not a threat. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and a lot of people doubted deck. They said, like, yeah, this is kind of like gimmicky deck that's still worse than Handlock and Demon Lock. But in the end, it is here, and a lot of people play it. If those guys play Reno Walk, I would say the deck is top tier. Yeah. yeah well, especially with Sixer, right? He always plays the top tier decks. Yeah. So apart, uh, apart from the moment when they were playing in the ATLC <laughs> and he brought the unrefined Secret. Unrefined <laughs> Secret, the first version. Yeah. Well, he did sense the deck is actually good, but maybe the rest was the best. <laughs> you know, the Frostwolf Grunt comes out of the Shredder. I like just getting Boom down now. It felt like he could have got it down a turn earlier or so, depending on what, what he decided, but just getting it on the board is really important, especially when you're not really challenged. I was thinking about the turn, just Siphon Soul it and Defend of Argus, but Trump decided to tap nice. instead. So I guess he wants to clear the bombs uh, with the 1-1s, one right? You, you attack with the 2-2 two, two first to the Demon. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it doesn't matter either way. It's basically the same, yeah. Well, it actually, does it? It's actually 50% 50, 50 now to hit it. I was actually 
almost sure that it was better to attack. Oh yeah, because you have more you. minions, right? Yeah, you'd have you, three minions when you start. You guarantee, the bombs that, so. you guarantee one more attack before the bomb goes off, yeah. right? So it was better to play the, to, attack, to attack with the two to first. If you plan, of course, to clear the board. Yeah. But that, there's a bigger chance that the bomb will hit face. Another minion. Oh, that's true. Oh, and it dies. Yep. It's good, though. Ah, oh, force to face. But it doesn't matter, probably, with all those heals. He cleared the board! <laughs> that looks like a turn for Twilight Drake. Would, I mean, you, would you want to bother following up with Lothab? Or would you want to so. would you, would you wait till the board's built uh, up to try and stop a Shadow Flame or yeah, something yeah, like I'll, that? A bit of a key turn? I would definitely play the Lothab later on, just because, first of all, there's almost no difference between, an example, Harrison Jones and Lothab in this situation, right? That's true. And uh, the fact is that if you have a Twilight Drake on board, you don't really care about the Shadow Flame. Yeah. Or a Twisting Nether, because you just have two minions on board. Why yeah. would you care about a, a removal? If you, if someone uses Twisting Nether on that... Great. Yeah, yeah sure. You're happy. I'm fine with yeah. that. I have nine different cards in my hand that still are being a threat to your deck. That's what's fun about this mirror match. Both players have, like... Massive hands all the time, so the decisions are actually quite intricate and not quite as straightforward as they seem a lot of the time. It's kind of similar to Control Warrior versus Control Warrior. It's yeah. all about how will the game end and what cards they will have at the very end of the game, right? Yeah. I would say it's similar to almost every arena. It, yeah, getting the most is. out of it. Uh, getting the most out of every like yeah, like, so like, game. Let's play those Yetis, smash each other, and see whose Yeti will live to, <laughs> at the end of the day. So now both players have Reno. So uh, they're even on that count. They might play it for the stats. Yeah, that te tempo. There is Bram Brosbeer as well. Can you double kill yourself with Reno? <laughs> well, technically it happens, right? It doesn't change anything, but it happens. <laughs> and both players like playing Twilight Drakes and then both players answering with Owl. Although Sixo doesn't have the Mortal Coil to make it uh, Ooh, really nice. That was the Jaraxxus. But oh. when do you play Jaraxxus in this mirror match? I mean, you probably want to play it as soon as possible because it, it it fuels your deck with permanent threats on board. Yeah. But the problem is then you diminish the value of your Reno Jackson and you can go deeper into your deck as fast as as your opponent. But, but they're getting to the point where they might not want to go deep into the deck. They have Reno, they have some heal options on both sides. Mm -hmm. But Sixer with the Draxus, he might just want to lay it down now and say, I'm going to make six sixes every turn. Also you can Reno if you want, but I'm making six sixes yeah, exactly. every single turn. Like, what you need to consistently clear this or kill me. And is there actually some burst in the deck? Because if you don't have the board, how do you even burst? Like, you the can get PO from Dark Peddler, you have Hellfire. There are some lists that are running uh, Faceless, Arcane Golem, and One Power Overwhelming. So they have the option for the burst, but I don't think these lists are running those. Obviously, they might be. We've not seen all the cards yet. But there are some going around that have that burst option. And again, because they're just a one-off deck, it's easy to sort of slip that one in. Yeah. Interesting. Siphon Soul, but uh, you need to deal with Sylvana somehow. So you want to run your minions into it. But then he's missing some damage here. Unless he uses Shadow Flame to deal with Sylvanas. Well, he has Dark Bomb as well, but it's just one. It's, it's so awkward, right? It, it feels like a waste to, to deal, to use free cards to deal with the Sylvanas. That's true. Um. Oh, man. I guess you can... Would you, would you not yeah. just... Mm, yeah. I think you should, should just use the Dark Bomb here and... Uh, yeah. You face oh, so I was going to say, would you not go for Draxus, but that would involve tanking. Uh, a good chunk of damage. He does have the heals. Yeah, I mean, he has heal on Reno, you which may as well, right? And again, I mean, you're not expecting burst, so... What if someone just plays one random Doomguard? <laughs> if he gets... He if he gets over power overwhelming from Dark Peddler... Oh, wow. You make the... You go for the play, right? You There's go no for reason power go overwhelming. For the odds on it drawing power is It's actually insane. very good. Oh, oh that's... Oh, 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 man. That's possibly oh, one of the worst uh, <laughs> discovers from Peddler I've seen. Yeah. The Coil's always nice, but then Blood Imp and the Murloc. The Billy. Yeah, the Murloc nobody likes. Amos likes it. By the way, I was just thinking, would you play Rafam in Reno Jackson Warlock? You can. Oh. That's, that's a great not? win condition. Yeah. Yeah, so much burst. <laughs> it gives you your burst option, You play right? Stalag and Fugen. Why not play Rafam? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a win condition on its own. You don't need to yeah. draw anything else. Play a minion, yeah. draw a win condition. It's insane. I have to try that when I'm back home. I'm, I'm playing that deck a lot when right, I'm We'll back. do it tonight after this. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing it right now. I'm queuing in line. <laughs> um, do you like Belcher here just to soak up the damage, or do you not care? Well, I, think, the I think you can get a bit more value out of Reno, I believe. And I know he's at 14 health, but you're not expecting burst now. So. I, I think you want to pressure, especially because you know uh, Sixo will eventually take over the board with the Infernals. Yep. So you want to pressure him. And he can heal maximum up to 15. So the more damage you have on board, the better situation you have. And you're not threatened yourself yet. You will be threatened if there's like two free infernals. Yeah, I'm working out whether he can go for an infernal shadow flame, but it's going to be a little bit too much mana. Because then he could clear the board and have something empty for the next turn to then like Reno or heal bot and then hero power again and then snowball from there. It's so whether he wants to risk. And for shell flame is what six. And He'd what be on six, yeah. What else does he want to do? He'd be on six and be left. What could he? How much mana would he have left? Uh, six. He'd have four. So he could play the BJH or the brand. Yeah, I like this. You leave an empty board. You sit on six. Brand is probably fine. You're not going to get double hell fired for a start. Double Hellfire? How is that even possible? There can be a Dark oh, Bomb. Oh, yeah, no, uh, there I can be a Dark Bomb, top deck. Have we seen Dark Bomb from Trump? We haven't. Well, he plays one, that's for sure, right? Yep. Tap Dark Bomb. Is there bomb? any reason not to tap? Because worst case scenario, you just slam Reno. But do, can you can you leave a Brand Bronzebeard? You can, right? There's no well, again, heal. like double heal, but OK, yeah. you're at 15. Like, uh, yeah. What other cards might be? Devastating with double battle cry. Not really in this deck, I think. Uh, Dark Peddler think might like be annoying. more bonuses, right? As opposed to anything that's too crazy. They're more like the bonuses. I say like the heal bot's the most impactful. Doctor Boom, four bombs. That's true. Yeah, well, that's one of the cards. Yes, that's true. Um, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. There, there are not that There's many. No Blackwing Corruptors there. No Blackwing Corruptors. Because the you play like one dragon, <laughs> so it's not. Certainly the best option to play. Brand is like an additional card. It's not It's not a key card. Well, it's still at three mana to four minion. I yeah, mean, it's, it's good. okay. And it works with uh, like six cards at least in your deck. Yeah. Well, when you play Brand and Defender of Argus, it's one of the best things. <laughs> yeah, suddenly it becomes a, like a scary minion. Oh, he's going to go for the Emperor. Yeah, I, I, well, this now, now he will play Sunfield Protector, I think, uh, alongside Ooh. that. Oh, he's nope. not. Wow. Okay, yeah. so he banks it on Shadow Flaming, the board. And then taunting up after that turn. Yeah. Blackwing Corruptor would be lethal. There's what does he have now? He has five, six, seven, eight. He has eight damage, and that's it, right? Oh man, just going to one. No regrets. Four health. Reno, Reno been nerfed. Two eyes. Get to the chopper. <laughs> Yeah, and we're going to start to see the power of getting that earlier Draxus now, because suddenly there's two pretty threatening minions on the board. Draxus still has the weapon to pump for another three damage. Ooh. And uh, there's not a lot Trump can do about this, actually. Well, he has Shadow Flame. Oh, so. for three. So he could actually uh, Dr. Boom Shadow Flame if he felt like it. I think, well, that's what it has to do to clear, right? But then it's really awkward starting from here, because there, there always will be an Infernal on board. Yeah. And you have to do something about Infernals. So you will be slowly falling behind. Even though it's only 15 health that you need to go through. Yeah, without running the actual any burst combos in the deck, then this is the issue. And this is why I really like Sixo getting that Draxis down earlier. So what about Do Do Dr. Boom and Sunfear Protector into... <sighs> you know well, there's you Mind Control Tech. There should be Mind Control Tech in the deck. He doesn't have the whole deck yet. <laughs> but... Uh, can you, mm, I'm working out, can you afford to just Reno? Well, at this point, he probably has to. Reno, he'll take 10, well, 13, but then he still has heal bot. Mm -hmm. So he does have the ability to like carry on and you'll survive the turn of burst. I quite like this. That's all right, many on the board as well. Try I was thinking point. about Hellfiring first and then Renoing just to weaken up the board. Oh, that's a good point, actually, because then Shadow Flame becomes a lot easier. Yes, I mean, th still there will be a 6-6 six, six next turn. But there won't most be three likely, big minions. Yeah, and your opponent might actually trade with the Union Jack. Yeah, and the Hellfire does zero damage to you. Yeah, exactly. You might need it for this turn specifically. 
Because right now you'll be able to Hellfire, play something in Shadow Flame, clear the board. But it, again, it's so many resources. Yeah. Almost out of cards, there's oh, Fugin. We can get Thaddeus. So do you, fu yeah, Fugin, Shadow Flame, Malco? That's, that's, but Fugin, Fugin has Fugin four. four. Oh, four. it's not, not oh, yeah. five. Oh, okay, I'll take it all back. Sorry, guys. Um, hmm. Hellfire would, Hellfire would make, make a difference here. Mm. Yeah. There, hmm. He needs that abusive sergeant. Are you, can, can you just throw away? Did you use one already? Is I don't know, you card? don't even know if it's in the deck. Do you want abusive in this deck? I think you do when you play Big Game Hunter in the Saturday deck. What about what about just Hellfire and then Healbot Shadow Flame? You clear the board and you go up to full. Yep. I think that's probably about as good as he's gonna get actually. And then next turn he can try and develop the uh, the Fugan. Because he can Fugan taunt next turn if he wants to get the 11 11. But, but Fugan I... taunt will not work when you know your opponent will have still have the Game Hunter. Yeah, I was just gonna say there's so many answers that uh, that could still be in or is in Sixo's deck to deal with any big minion. Mortal Coil, one of the bombs! Oh, missed. I was actually serious. To Mortal Coil, one of the bombs right now? It's so okay, to try and snipe it's one not terrible, minions. it's not terrible, but then it draws your card and you get closer to your card. Yeah, well, he will draw, he will, he will deal one damage to himself and uh, be on the brink of fatiguing like one turn ahead, but mm. wouldn't it be so bad if you will just deal the instant damage right now to maybe kill one of the threats? The chances are pretty low, but I, I think it, it's a player. Yeah, because you have 66% to hit one of the minions and 50% chance to kill on one of those, right? Yeah. Not, is it, is it's not that horrible. 50%? Yeah, it's a 50%, because you need to hit three or four, right? Yeah. And that's it. Wait, isn't it Twisting Nether for Trump for the, the last card? We haven't seen it, but this deck normally runs one. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different variations uh, that you can Ooh. take just one one card in, one card out. The Twisting Three Nether isn't too face. common. Well, a bomb to the face is bad for Trump. He needs the second bomb either go to the face two for four damage or to the clear minion and actually, actually that's a huge deal. It is. Yeah, he now can. he can actually clear the board. Molten Giant. Mm. So he doesn't have Twisting Nether. Yeah. Molten Giant is useless. And he needs to Shadow Flame this. So, okay, so do you Fugan Shadow Flame? Let him be GH. And then. I don't know. Uh, and have then to go for yeah, the and then Draxus. Draxus yeah, but. Then you, uh, you do have Healbot, so you can Draxus kill BGH Healbot. It's just whether you can keep up with. But then you've got the 6 6 to deal with, right? But your opponent still has a full hand and a deck. There's yeah. like two cards oh, left. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not saying he's in a great position, but. If he did that, he clears the board, and then next turn, uh, after the Draxus, he takes six damage. How much burst has he got? Because then he has the ability to play his um, his six six and Shadow Flame. I, I wouldn't just clear the clear the board from him being behind. I wouldn't actually blame him if he concedes here. This is definitely rough because you are facing a board that you have to deal with, and you are making a defensive move. So I mean, this this you can do, and hope there is no bigger hunter, and no way to deal with Thaddeus. Thaddeus comes down. But uh, after the big encounter, yeah, like you have no tools. BGH. Wow, that minion, bro. 11 11 swole, dude, and it got killed by a dwarf. Killed by a dwarf. Yeah. With a big gun. Well, on it. And such a party pooper, right? The big game hunter. Well played from Trump. Well played. That's how Dax sounds, so. Good luck. Alright, All right, so Trump is. Yeah, voiceover for Trax? Well, did yeah, the voiceover I can, I can do the Polish voice for <laughs> Well played. In something at Rooster Championship. Actually, that's a very cool trophy when, yeah. you, when you look at our own. Right? But a very heavy trophy yeah. as well. It's very heavy. And it's not only like physically heavy, but it's also heavy mentally. This was this is the first global Insomnia. And we'll have the first global Insomnia champion. Look at that. Trump is left with his aggro shaman playing wolf riders and Arjun horse riders. And he got Finley. I haven't seen a version with Wolf Rider, but we can obviously say it's super aggressive. Yeah, there's a couple of flex slots in the deck as well, because where um, previously you saw Fell Reavers um, in the sort of mech uh, aggro shaman, uh, this, like most of the deck sort of slots back in, but the two Fell Reavers slots are very you know, flexible. Yeah. You can put whatever you want in. As long as it hits face, of course. <laughs> most of the things uh, hit face in this deck, at least. 
But I, I like how Finley Murgleton fits. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's great in his deck. And the 1-3 body's actually pretty cool. Oh, man, and there's Shapeshift and Steady Shot. Which one do you take? He does have Doomhammer, but I think Steady Shot's the, the better pick over time. I think so, too. Especially with his hand. Like, he has no turn two at the moment, so take the two damage now. Especially versus a deck like we know Lock, where you can expect some taunts, at least. Uh, Mr. Finley with your shenanigans. He is a gentleman. He's giving. He's wearing a monocle. How can you not like that guy? The hero power will give such a huge advantage in this matchup. But again, it's still going to be rough because unless he can put together the big burst turn with the spells, um, you know, Reno's a card. It is, but it has to be in the hand. And he has Doomhammer already. If he gets a Rock Biter, he might be in a good position. You have to draw that Reno. Well, it's kind of easy when you have a Harrison Jones on a Doomhammer. That's very true. But if you have more than four cards in your hand and you will burn Reno Jackson. Imagine. Oh, it my God. feels bad. <laughs> He feels, man. He Would feels. you just concede? Harrison Jones just re getting rid of Reno Jackson makes sense as well. Because Harrison Jones was not invited to League of Explorers. Yeah, well, that's why good. wasn't he invited? I'm sure, I'm sure you know that. I, I don't know, but like he's... <laughs> oh, what? Come on. No, I, oh, no, no. We, guys, we've got a problem. <laughs> he was he's missing the law. But his hat actually made it. Yeah. For in, in a Hunter deck. Yeah, I love so it. An with interesting genies. pick. I love with, with Genius and Faint Death. <laughs> the multi-hats. <laughs> uh, pure, beauty to behold, and you also have value. If you played, uh, if you play Explorer's Hat on a Golden Minion, you get it back golden. Oh wow! Oh nice! Don't you need, cool. to, don't you need yeah. to craft that, my boy. Just have another Golden Minion, you'll be fine. There is a Trog for Trump. A bit late, but maybe he can use it still. And um, he can Trog Lightning Bolt Hero Power. Seems okay. Would you Lightning Bolt the two two? Just because they're think Lightning Bolt phase anyway. If you do that. Oh, okay, he's gonna do that way. Okay. Is he not going to Lightning Bolt? No. Nope. Twisting Nether for Xixxop. So Xixxop plays the version of Twisting Nether. It's very interesting. This is going to be so devastating because this is the best, the best moment to play Doomhammer and just go, I, I, I think like go for face, deal four damage. Do you risk the burn? I, you do not expect Harrison Jones. <laughs> and with Harrison Jones, this is a really tough situation. Trump can still win this because he has a little burst. Especially a really great combination, Assist, uh, assist Knowledge and Lava Bird. <laughs> now Xixo is going for the Doom Hammer, and that is six cards. Okay. Will there be a Reno Jackson burn? Shadow Flame, Defender Vargas, Big Game Hunter. What is getting burned? Burn. Dark, Dark Paddler. Oh, Dark Paddler. That will be still Metal. one more burn. That will be still <laughs> one more burn. Oh, oh but he can't, that he can't lock it in. Uh, no. He can't play it, but it's and still great pickup. If he gets Rock Biter, that's 10 points of damage just right yeah. there. Well, what, okay, there are a few options now. You can go for Lava Burst. You go as Knowledge bolt, Burst. And then you'll have four overload for, uh, three Overload for next sense. You'll have four mana. You can then Lava, uh, lava Shock into Doomhammer to deal six, but your opponent will deal to you five, seven, ten. 20 over those two turns, so if he has 5 damage during the upcoming two turns, you're dead. So you can't play that that type of play. So the other options are, if you play um, Elemental Destruction, you fish for that, so you use Ancestral Knowledge, Hero Power, uh, unless you... Wow, that's that's so deck are, are, we, are we dead in 3 turns? Like, this is 7, 10 damage you're taking, so that, yeah. that's not that much. I, I would go for Ancestral Knowledge and Lava, Bur uh, Lava, Lava, Lava Shock. Shock. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. And then Hero Power as well, because you unlocked mana. So you deal 4 damage like to face. That. 4 damage, draw 2 cards, yeah. help for next turn. He goes for the really aggressive route, so both Lava Burst and Lightning Bolt. The only... yeah, yeah, this is... this is okay. What's he actually need to... Draw then, because he has to. Oh my! Oh, God. oh man! Uh, so That's how you do it yep. in the Wild West. Think <laughs> <laughs> so? Even giving a little smile there, going, yeah. I mean, he will that win. Just happened. I see Jones. I'm almost sure that he will win anyway. Yeah. Because but... of both of them. Oh man! He's doing the life coach, uh, the life coach face there. Harrison Jones got rid of Reno Jackson. What? Oh. Harrison Jones is like, Could we you? don't, we don't need you here. There's only place for one explorer with the hat Barrel and that's it eight yeah kind of much and this means that Sixo is going to win this didn't even need reno in this matchup didn't even need yeah. it it was, it was just faster 
was faster than his opponent. So that was that was really interesting. And this means that Sixo and Trump, they both have one win in the group because Trump won before. So they are both at, uh, it was Sixo's first game, I feel. So he has one win and Trump is uh, at 1-1. He still has a good chance to go out of the group. So Trump funds, don't worry. Trump still has great chance to get out of his group because he has at 1-1. Sixo though, one win, so pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and a double Reno lock uh, from both players. That was players. amazing. So was really good to see. Really interesting. And there's always, um, I like the fact that because of the way the deck's built in terms of all the one-offs, there's a lot of different variations possible for each player. Um, and we saw different ones there. The, uh, the twist in Nether versus uh, the lack of there, and uh, even a few against Stalag, and we didn't see that on the other side. I just love uh, our players. <laughs> so we told, distracted, we, told, we told our players to shake hands, but we didn't tell them what to do afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's full instruction. Full instruction. Um, th this is um, just a way of getting those awkward shots of the players <laughs> yeah. for the future, right? So you, you can put it on Reddit in a odd shot link or something like yeah. that. Like, Everyone's th starting to I make love the those, memes. I love those handshake from CSGO players. They like have no idea what to do. So <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get something like of Hearthstone like that. So that would be really, really cool. And uh, I like how they are like in the dark. You can see them <laughs> <laughs> in the front of the in the front <laughs> of the trophy and like sitting there, like you know, can't really know who that is. So it's, <laughs> it's fine though. Real good. I I love this series. Both, as you mentioned, Reno Jackson decks, great. The mirror match was amazing, and then the shamans from both players. So we have new styles, new decks, and meta game changed. No more patron. Well, we do have patron, but they didn't bring it. Yeah, it's really good to see overall and good play from both guys. I think uh, when you get like the, the Reno mirror especially, it's just like so intricate and so many things you have to yeah. sort of half play around, but because there's only one of you can't really play around everything. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I love the Reno Jackson work. So it's, just, it's, a, it's a beauty to behold, a beauty to cast because you can't really predict what will be happening. Uh, everyone brings something uh, of their own flavor to the deck. And uh, that's that's the beauty of card games. That's that's that. Even though everyone has the same resources, there will be some differences between the players. Yeah, so, yeah. especially where you can actually play a toolbox deck. So like some some decks, when it, like let's say Paladin, there is not much wiggle room where uh, where you choose the cards. But with Reno Lock, having Twisting Nether, having Stalag and Fugan, having Jaraxxus actually makes a difference. And I think that Jaraxxus uh, that Sixo played early was uh, a big win for him. Uh, because he, he he was the first to actually play the Infernals. Yeah, it was really heads-up play because it, it feels bad to set yourself to 15 when you have so much full healing in your deck, but being able to just get ahead and generate 6-6 six is, is, is the way you do it, and uh, you just the deck's just going to run out of answers. Absolutely. All right, guys, this is Insomnia True Silver Championship. We're here at Insomnia Festival. It's at 56 Insomnia. We have the guys here with all the computers and PCs having fun at the LAN event, but right now we are going to head into short break, so stay tuned for more Hearthstone after the break.